Hey guys, and Happy New Year. It's me, Spooky Brandy, and as promised, I'm coming here with a reflection of 2020. Now, it is the popular opinion, and completely justified, uh, that this was a garbage year for so many reasons. Globally, this was a terrible year. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm not. Um, we all know that that happened, right? There's nothing we can do to change it. There's nothing we can do to fix it, resolve it. It's really <laughs> like completely out of our hands, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna reflect on my personal experiences this year, what I went through personally, what I learned, and the positives that came out of this year. I actually tried to film this yesterday and I was in the absolute worst headspace and um, it was a garbage video. I didn't like my makeup that day. I didn't like my hair. <laughs> I didn't like the lighting. I didn't like any of it. So this is a redo, okay? So hopefully this will be a little bit more concise than my attempt last night. <laughs> um, but let's start off with a recap of what 2020 looked like for me and my family, okay? Um, I'm not gonna go too in depth in each of the events. I'm just gonna kind of like touch on each of the things and rest assured there's a video on my channel for any of the big events that happen that go into more detail if you wanted to look into that. With that being said, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you want to be part of the spooky family. If not, please feel free to keep watching without any kind of obligation uh, to do anything. <laughs> just enjoy. So I went into 2020 with the utmost optimism because in 2019 I had left my husband and I was living a single life and being a single mom and navigating the struggles of that. Near the end of 2019, he tricked me once again into thinking he was a different person and he realized what he had done wrong and he didn't want to lose me and he was going to do everything in his power to make everything better, right? We've all heard that before and I've done a video on this. So at the beginning of 2020, I was going into the year like, new year, let's, let's change, you know, so many things. Let's have a fresh start. Let's give this marriage our all for the kids and also for me. You know, I wanted to kind of prove to myself that he, he was a good person deep down and I wasn't completely off my rocker by trying to be with him. That was stupid in the long run, but you know, it, mistakes were made. <laughs> um, so that's how 2020 started. And we were going to, I was going to uh, put in the effort to relocate the family. I had really had my eyes set on Greenville, South Carolina for a long time. And I thought, you know, this is a perfect opportunity to start fresh and really give our family a chance at that fresh start, new environment, new people, new culture. And I was really optimistic about it. But we get up there and both Lydia and I started showing signs of having COVID. Now we didn't know that we had COVID obviously, because this was in February. February of 2020, uh, supposedly we didn't have COVID in the United States. That's what we were told. We also didn't have any of the information as far as like what symptoms COVID had other than fever and having trouble breathing. That's all we knew back then. So here I am with a fever of 103, Lydia a fever of 104, vomiting and um, a cough, yes, but no trouble breathing. We couldn't taste anything. We didn't know at the time that that was a symptom because that had not come out yet. And again, to our knowledge, COVID wasn't here. So we were just thinking we had some awful virus. Long story short, my ex showed his true colors while I was fighting COVID. And it made me realize this man does not love me. This man does not love me in, in any respect of the word. Uh, I mean, just five months prior, he was telling me how much he loved me and, and I was in love again and just, oh my goodness. And now here I am having to build up the courage once again to get this man out of my life. And that taught me so much. Honestly, I learned so much from that experience. 
and uh, you know, I, I definitely learned that you know it's not smart to take back an X. That's for sure. It's never ended well. <laughs> so going forward, <laughs> um, so that's one thing I learned in this year, and I also proved to myself that I can do anything I put my mind to. I can achieve anything that I want as long as I put my mind and soul at it. Um, so at that point, you know, I was like, okay, well. Here we go again. And this time, uh, I didn't extend all of the generosity that I did last time because he didn't appreciate it last time. So I really got good at setting boundaries. This was compounded by the fact that we are in a pandemic and lockdown, and I'm trying to navigate, you know, getting this man out of my life, but also not cutting him off from his children in the same process. So. That was a learning experience. At the same time, it was proof that I can do this even in a global pandemic. <laughs> so if anything, it really kind of gave me this huge boost of confidence in myself and my ability to conquer this. And um, we, you know, stayed in lockdown for several months, really not a whole lot going on, um, but, I got to work from home for the first time. You know, starting in, in March all the way to now, I've been able to work from home, which for most corporate companies was not possible and would cost the company so much money and it just isn't feasible. Um, and, <laughs> and in a way, this pandemic has proven how untrue that statement is and how this is completely possible. And this whole work-life balance and working from home and having the ability to see my children on a regular basis wasn't impossible at all. It's just not what the company wanted. So that right there was very eye-opening. And I'm sure that a lot of other people that are in corporate America can relate. Um, it, it really also taught, I think, a lot of us, those of us that have eyes and brains, that essential workers, fast food employees, um, grocery store clerks, um, you know, your Costco, your all of these retail places, we rely on those workers. And in a lot of our minds, it really helped realign, you know, this, this country is, working off the backs of these essential workers. It's not corporate America that's running this country. When everything went to shit, all those corporate companies shut down. Did we see the impacts of that? No. It was McDonald's and Walmart that we were like, oh my God, thank God these employees are here. Thank God they are, they're putting in all of these extra hours. Thank God they're open. And although we didn't see any positive impacts on how we're treating those employees, um, I hope that this has sparked a change in a lot of people's minds. And that argument of, oh, they want $13 an hour to flip burgers will no longer be a, at the forefront. Now I know there's some very ignorant old people out there that think differently and fuck them, they'll die soon. Um, but it, to me, this was a step in the right direction as a wake up call to kind of prove to America, the world, that these employees that are pushing carts and stocking shelves and flipping burgers are who we turn to in our time of need. So there's that. Um, <laughs> and the whole, you know, moms having to be pulled away from their kids to work in an office when they very easily could be working from home at no detriment to the company. Um, I think that's another piece that um, it, hopefully it sparks change um, for the better because I know I have loved being a stay at home, work at, working from home mother. This is something I have not been able to do since my kids were born. So this pandemic brought about one huge lifestyle change that I've been wanting for years. So that was a huge positive for me. I got to see my kids learning and applying themselves through virtual classes and like 
just getting to see how their brains work and the things that they were struggling with and the things that they were excelling at and, and really helping them. Like I, I now know like firsthand what they need to excel and I can help them with that. I'm not having to rely on a piece of paper from their teacher explaining what they, the teacher thinks they need. I can see it firsthand and I can be their advocate and I can step in where you know, the teacher can't. That's another huge thing that I would never have been able to do in my previous experience, you know, having to be at work five days a week, Monday through Friday. Like I didn't get to see any of this. You know, um, having to spend thousands of dollars on after school care, like not having to do that has put me in a financial stability that I never thought possible. Like this was a huge positive from this whole pandemic. Um, you know, and I, I'm gonna put a disclaimer in here. I understand that not everybody has had this experience and it could be a vastly different experience for everybody, but I'm just speaking from my own personal experience. Um, and I'm, it's not lost on me how bad this whole situation has been for most of America. And it has been a huge negative for me as well, but I'm not here to talk about that because I feel like we've heard enough of what terrible things we've had to go through because of this pandemic. Um, I wanted to insert that here because I just wanted to make sure that nobody is thinking like, this pandemic was great, but that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> um, but I wanted to highlight the things that were a good thing that came from this year. Um, I was able to pick up hobbies. I, now that I wasn't commuting three hours a day, Yes, you heard that right. I was commuting three hours a day, five days a week in my, to get to my office. So I was gone from my kid's life for 12 hours a day. So <laughs> now that that wasn't a factor, I'm now able to pick up hobbies and take time for myself that I never had before. I was able to pick up gardening, which I'm not very good at, but you know, I tried. <laughs> Um, I was able to work with magic, which I have not had the ability to do in a very, very, very long time. I was able to actually, you know, do spell work and track the moon cycles and really make this room a, a safe haven and a, you know, positive place for me to just kind of veg out. Um, I picked up TikTok, which that's brought me an infinite amount of joy. <laughs> Um, I, pe people can say what they want about that app, but it has brought people together. It has been a very positive thing to come out of this year. Um, you know, I, I learned a lot about myself. Uh, I've done a lot of self-discovery. Um, I actually was uh, brave enough to start an OnlyFans and kind of dip my toes in the sex industry. And as a 36-year-old woman um, with a baby bod, um, with no plastic surgery, <laughs> crooked teeth, um, you name it, you know, I was actually successful at it. And that was mind blowing. And that gave me so much confidence. Um, it's something I never thought I could do, or it was too late for me to do. And here I am not only doing it, but making two to three grand in the first two months that I tried it. And that was with me barely logging in. <laughs> so, you know, although I've let that die, uh, I'm going to be picking that back up very soon. I'm sorry for those of us, for those of you who do follow me on OnlyFans, I apologize. I know that I've dropped the ball there. A lot's been going on. <laughs> but yeah, like, like that was huge. There's a huge positive that came out of this year. And I realized that I could do that and, and, not only do that, but do that comfortably and have some extra spending cash. Like that's what I used for my kids Christmas. Like it was great. You know, um, I learned who my, you know, I learned the truth about a lot of people in my life that either I held in high regard or I thought better of, and then kind of learned the hard way that they were not who I thought they were. Um, and that, is liberating. Um, there was no more confusion, you know? And although I've always kind of been like this, it really helped me cut people out that I didn't need in my life that was bringing toxicity into my world. 
and nobody needs that. So, you know, it really helped me kind of get the guts to just be like, no, nah, I don't need this. Block. <laughs> Cut. Um, but yeah, like that's been huge. Uh, on top of that, like right before Christmas, I ended up getting in a relationship with somebody that I never thought possible. And you know, it's, it, right now we're, you know, we're real early into the stages of this relationship. It, it might go sour next week. Who knows? But like, I see a lot of potential and I feel safe and I feel loved and respected and supported. I'm getting emotional. Sorry. <laughs> I feel supported and loved and respected more than I ever thought possible. And you know, it's a polyamorous relationship. He has a girlfriend as like, I'm one of his two girlfriends. So, you know, the days that I'm working or the days that I'm, you know, busy doing this stuff, he's with her, he lives with her. And then I get him like once or twice a week and the times that we're together, it's magical. And it makes me feel so cherished and loved. And, you know, not everybody agrees with polyamory and I totally respect that and understand that. This is my first polyamorous relationship. So I'm navigating this as a new thing, um, but so far it's been amazing. And I feel like the most special woman in the world. I don't feel like twinges of jealousy when he's with her. Like as long as when he's with me, I'm his focus, I'm happy. And that's crazy to think about, you know? Like forever, I've had this, forever we've been like programmed to think that like, oh, just because he has another person in his life, like you're, you're not important to him. Like, I don't feel like that at all. I don't, it's not for everybody. I'm not trying to sell anybody on it. I'm just letting you know where my mind is. <laughs> but like, that's been crazy. And so it's like, I started this year in the ultimate heartbreak and ended this year in love. Like that's crazy in this crazy awful year. Like all this, I've gotten to spend all this time with my kids. I've gotten to, it just so much good has come from it. And I'm gonna ride that wave into 2021. I'm not gonna like cut it off and be like, okay, 2020 is over, starting new year. No, like I'm gonna continue because this year has been an upswing of positivity and opportunity. So I'm gonna ride that wave into 2021. And oh yeah, and I started my Twitch career. Like that was a thing I didn't think I could do, but thanks to OnlyFans, I could afford to get a gaming PC and like cool lights and hard drives and like, and games and, and build a community on Twitch that I didn't think was a possibility. But because I'm not supporting a grown man anymore, and I have this side gig of OnlyFans, I was able to afford to like get this started. And it's been great, it's been awesome. I've had so much fun revisiting like older games and learning new games and like there's a whole community in that that I, I'm like just now getting friends and, and followers that I wouldn't have had had I not ventured into Twitch, you know? And Twitch is the whole reason that this relationship with my boyfriend and I grew into what it is. So it's like, I, I'm gonna keep going with this. Like Twitch has been amazing. I'm definitely going to give that my all. I'm gonna jump back into OnlyFans because I feel bad that I have completely left all of you guys that are on there like in the dark. Um, so I'm definitely gonna be putting more out there more regularly. I've got to get a schedule written up because otherwise we go crazy. Um, but yeah, <laughs> my year has has definitely been interesting. Uh, it has been a, a year of change. I opened myself up to this world of, I, I don't have to cater to someone that doesn't love and respect me. I, you know, I changed the locks and I made it to where my ex cannot get into my home anymore, which that was a huge step because he, he tried to gaslight and manipulate me to think that that was not okay for me to say like, no, you can't come over. I'm gonna take the kids to you. You make it work for your visits and that's where we're gonna be. And he tried to guilt me into like not doing that and I wasn't having it anymore. And I was like, no, nah, this is my space. I bought this home 100% by myself. 
my name is the only name on any of the paperwork. The mortgage, the deed, all of it is just my name. He is nowhere on any of it. So, <laughs> this is my place. No one's going to bully me into giving up my sacred space and my happiness, happiness and my realm of peaceful solitude just because you don't want to put forth the effort to get yourself on track. Not my problem anymore. So I changed the locks myself um, and, and I really put my foot down. And that was another thing that I didn't think I was going to have the guts to do. And here I am. I just, at this point, sky's the limit. Uh, in a couple weeks, I'm gonna be going to Greenville to kind of check out some apartments and see if Greenville's my next chapter. It may not be, you know, I might put in more thought and think, you know, I have a lot here, let me do what I can with this house. But I might decide, you know, Greenville's the next chapter. So either way, I'm gonna be happy. I'm gonna make a decision that not only benefits me, but benefits my children. And uh, I'm gonna see where this relationship takes me. And I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. I'm gonna keep grinding. And I have a lot of hope. I'm not gonna put the hope on the year. Um, I'm gonna put a lot of hope in me. But I will say this, I know that my story does not match a lot of people's stories. Um, it is not lost on me the tragedy that people have faced this year. And I want everyone to remember that in times like this, we cannot hold ourselves to the same standards that we held five years ago, three years ago, before the world started to crash. If you've gained 20, I've gained 20 pounds. Like, I've gained weight this year. Everybody has, you know? Some people haven't, I get that, but a lot of us have gained weight because we're stuck inside and we're depressed and, you know, that is okay. It is okay. You do not need to live up to anybody's standards right now. You're alive. And that's more than a lot of people can say. So let's leave vanity at the door, all right? Let's eat, let's be merry, let's be happy, let's refocus what, what means the most. Do not hold yourself to the standard of perfect mom or perfect parent or perfect girlfriend or whatever it may be because we are no longer in that situation that we were in three years ago. Everything has changed and we need to adapt with it. We need to change, evolve, adapt, realign our expectations. And if somebody else in this world is not realigning their expectations and they're making you feel bad for being who you are or for being what size you are or for your appearance in any way, you do not need them in your life. Social media does a real good job of making us feel like we're like ugly peasants. <laughs> And it will tell you, you know, a lot of people will say like, oh, it says a lot, you know, you're wearing 10 pounds of makeup. I like wearing makeup. I do. So anyway, <laughs> I want you guys to just remember that you are human and this situation has put us all in the absolute worst scenarios that we could imagine. And I know that some of us lost loved ones this year. Some of us are in terrible health situations. Some of us are in terrible housing situations. Um, but all we can do is try to refocus, think outside the box, and maybe, just maybe, all of this has triggered or sparked change to where things are gonna keep working the way they've been. So we gotta fix it. And I hope that benefits those of us in the working class because I'm right here with you. I'm still working my nine to five. I'm still fighting the good fight. So let's see, let's see what happens. Let's see what this year, what changes this year has brought about. Maybe it's not all bad. Maybe some good changes will come from this. Anyway. 
you guys are amazing. You are gorgeous. And if anyone tells you anything different, they can suck it. Oh, also check out my gaming channel if you want to. If you like games, whatever. See me on Twitch. At least say hi. Okay, I love you. Bye-bye.